In this video, we're going to do a crash course, a crash course in functions for Cambridge Math. So let's get started. Um, quick review of functions: What a function is? A function has exactly one output for each input. So um, sometimes you see functions written, you know, described as a set of inputs and outputs. Like uh, three, five, seven, two, one, one. Um, so three could go here, and both five and seven could go to one. It doesn't really matter. Uh, that's a function. But what can't happen is you can't have uh, three go to two different numbers. So this input cannot have two different outputs. That would not be a function. Uh, sometimes you see the vertical line test. So if you have a graph, if you could pass a vertical line anywhere through the graph and the vertical line touches the graph more than once, then it's not a function. The reason that is is because um, if it touched, if you had a graph like this, um, this would be an output, and this would be another output, and this right here, the x, would be the input, and so here would be an input that have more than one output. That would not be a function. All right. Onward to better things. Uh, y is what we call a function of x. Y is the output. It's the dependent variable. X is independent. So the way we write that, uh, y is a function of x. So we just write f of x. It means that this is what y equals. Y is a function of x. So suppose that we have this function. Uh, it says 3 divided by x plus 1 plus x squared. Uh, the British notation sometimes looks like this. Sometimes not. Sometimes they write it just like this. Um, anyway, this means the same thing as this. So don't let that confuse you. All right. If I wanted to see what happens when the function um, has an input of 3, so like this would be the instructions. It would say something like evaluate this. What that means is for your function, everywhere you see an x, and there are two of them, everywhere you see an x, you put a 3. So you put a 3 here. You put 3 there, and then you just do the arithmetic. Follow the order of operations. So 3 plus 1 is 4, so it's 3 fourths, plus 3 squared is 9, so that would be 9 and 3 fourths. Pretty easy. Um, for rational functions, like this one right here, where there's a ratio, um, sometimes there's limits to the domain. Um, the domain is, of course, a set of all possible inputs. So, for example, here, uh, you can't use negative 1 for x. If you use negative 1 for x, you see negative 1 plus 1 is 0. You can't divide by 0. Nothing times 0 equals 3. So that would be undefined. Okay. Let's try a few. So uh, it's really simple. What this says right here is that you're going to take these two functions. f of x is x squared plus 1. g of x is 2x plus 3. And you're just going to add them. So x squared plus 1 plus 2x plus 3. All you're doing is combining like terms, so x squared plus 2x plus 4. Sorry for the poorly writing pen. All right. <coughs> uh, this one they're multiplying, so that would be just x squared plus 1 times 2x plus 3. So let's see here. That would be, hope I don't mess up. That would be pretty embarrassing. Let's see. 2x squared and then or 2x cubed and then 3x squared plus 2x plus 3. So there's that. Alright. Uh, I have a feeling this should be pretty easy. You try it on your own. Make sure you can get 10. Um, here. Now this is called composition. And what you're doing is you're taking g and plugging the function g into the function of f. Uh, the way I've always seen it written is like this, or like this. But the Cambridge style this notation is just like this. There's not a dot in between. It's not multiplying. So anyway, what you're doing is everywhere for the function f, everywhere you see an x, you're going to replace that x with the entire function of g. So this would be <coughs> so instead of x squared plus 1 
I'm going to have the function g placed right there, so that's going to be 2x plus 3. <coughs> so that's 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 plus 1. There you go. Okay, last thing. And again, this is uh, intended to be a review. Um, not uh, a step-by-step -step lesson for introducing something as new. Um, this right here means inverse. It's not um, an exponent of negative 1. What it means is it means the inverse function. So um, what the inverse function does, it does the exact opposite of this. It reverses the operations and the order of operations. So the way to do this is you write your equation, you write your function, but write it as y instead of g of x, and then you exchange these. This is not a math step right here. This is these two things. Um, they are not equal to each other. Okay, but what it does is it it is going to give us a way that we can find the, everything opposite. So we can find the opposite of the operations and uh, the inverse order by solving for this y right here. So if you subtract three from both sides, you get x minus three equals two y. And then if you uh, just divide both sides by 2, then your new function is y equals x minus 3 divided by 2, writing it with our proper notation. I hope this video has been helpful. Have a good day.